The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, we're in the doctrine of biblical cosmology, and uh, we are dealing with the features of the earth under Roman numeral seven. Sorry, your pages aren't numbered. It's page six, Roman numeral seven. All right, let's uh, remember that we have a liability as positive believers, and that is trying to receive spiritual information if we're out of fellowship. It is your responsibility as a believer to keep close tabs on yourself here and elsewhere. Are you in fellowship or aren't you in fellowship? And it matters when it comes to the perception of spiritual information. So let's take the usual time to implement, if you need to, 1 John 1, 9, and keep yourself in fellowship on this uh, blockbuster topic. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we assemble ourselves together so that we can continue in our quest for the crown and for those things that you promised to those of us as believers who take your plan seriously. Bless our time together and the matters at hand. In Christ's name, amen. The Genesis account of the creation of the earth and the restoration of the earth as a result of the tohu wabohu void and without form judgment. This chapter, this first chapter, is devoted to the origin of the things that we are aware of that exist, but it gives us the order in which God, by fiat creation, bringing into existence out of nothing, and establishing these independent or these individual entities. The uh, judgment on the earth is a result of the fall of Satan and the rebellion of the angels. Uh, it has to be that. The original creation uh, was the creation of the heavens and the earth. All right. That's the original creation, heavens and earth. The earth came at the very time that God created heaven above. Heaven above is a place, just like this is a place. It's a place, it's, it's where God's throne is. It is where believers are now and where angels are and go, come and go. And uh, it is not that far away from us. It is not hidden out there uh, millions of light years away. It is close. It's comforting to me, at least, to realize that, our, that the Lord, Jesus Christ, in his glorified body, who now sits at the right hand of the Father, the side of preeminence, since his final ascension, he is seated at the right hand of the father figure on the, on the throne of heaven. Now, but backing up, we have the creation of the earth and the heavens. Our earth in its pre-fall, if you will, condition, perfect and beautiful. And then something happened that put it in utter darkness no light. It was locked down in darkness and everything was cold and the original continent was submerged beneath water and the water over it was frozen. Not a, not a, not a place you'd want to go to. No life forms, nothing. Just darkness and extreme sub-zero cold. 
getting it ready for restoration. It's kind of like you're going to build something. You get the, let's say it's a building or some project. First, you get the ground right. If you're going to build a building, you get it all real nice and level. You can't have rocks and unevenness. You've got to get it flat. Okay? And then you can begin the process of working with the foundation up. Words. So, the Holy Spirit, it says it here, the Spirit of God, third person of the Godhead, he, he was moving over the surface of the waters, or literally in the Hebrew, was hovering over the surface of the waters. And the waters were thawed out. But now what do you have? You have darkness and liquid water everywhere. This is the first flood. The earth is flooded two times in its history. It won't ever be flooded again. The potential's there. Most of the earth is covered with water. The potential is there, but it will not ever be flooded again. And the rainbow that you might see in the sky is God's token and sign that he'll never do this again. Okay? Now, we went through the seven... Well, no, we didn't go through all of them. But we started with each day, each 24-hour day, in which God did a different or added a different thing or things. Now, this is how it all came about. So, so what do we have to do to make this start working? We've got to get light. Light. You can't operate in darkness. Things can't exist permanently in darkness. You've got to have light. So a, so a light source was established over the face of the earth and it moved like our sun moves over the face of the earth. More on that later. And the result of that movement was the establishment of the first day of the first week in human history. No life forms exist yet. Just this light and this light would continue through, well, we name, we have, our, we have names for our days of the week, of course. Uh, <clears throat> Sunday was the light source, day one. Day two, God put a dome, like in uh, a stadium, a dome over the top of the earth. It is mistranslated expanse in your version, in my opinion. It should be translated, and they should have kept firmament. There are other descriptive words for it in the Bible. Uh, vaulted dome, what's that? Well, it's this dome, and he put this in the midst, and then it gets, for the reader, it's what is this? In the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And he made the firmament, verse 7, and separated the waters. It does good if you open your Bible and read along with me. This is the whole point here. <clears throat> to separate the waters which were below the firmament from the waters which were above. The waters below are easy to identify. Again, the water's thawed out and there's no land yet. There's just water everywhere. And above the dome is a water reservoir. And right above that is the third heaven. Now that's about as far as I can explain it for you. You have to try to picture it in your own head. And so he separated the waters above from the waters below. And he called this firmament heaven named it. Notice he, he's naming things. It may seem completely elementary, but names matter. Identification. We use them all the time. We don't necessarily think about it, but we uh, uh, have names. God designated in the original language that he would call the 
Daylight hours, day. Hebrew, yom. And of course, and another word for Hebrew, darkness. I think it's koshek. Darkness. So as this light form moves over the earth and is a substitute until we get our, until we got our sun, it establishes day-night movement over this flat, circular surface. And that's day two. Again, God could do it all at once, but that doesn't look good. Let's do it in stages. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, once we get the dome established, what do we need next? We need dry land. So God does a continental lift. Just like he had submerged it, he lifted it up. And when he lifted it up, water ran off to its lowest level, established, established the pre-Diluvian ocean and the pre-Diluvian singular continent called Pangaea. There wasn't a, the continents were not broken up yet. That came after the flood. God is in control of all things in the natural world, including the earth's geology. So we get all of it in one place. He called the dry land earth, Eretz, uh, and, and he called the waters, seas or oceans, Yam, and God saw that it was good. Now this day, we're not through. This is a day where two things happen rather than a singular thing. You've got dry land, so now what do you have to have? It's all barren. And on that same day, he established the plant kingdom. Could he do that? Yeah. And so in a 24 hour span, there was like a green line and where it was barren, then it became green, filled with all kinds of plants from the smallest to the largest trees. They were all full blown. This is your first living, living things on the restored earth. We get plants first. Plants are essential to the existence of these other life forms that, are, that were put here. So, let the earth sprout vegetation. And these plants, as I said, be like you going out to a nursery, buying mature or near, nearly mature plants and bringing them and sticking them in your yard. You see occasionally someone has a, has a pretty large tree that someone comes out, digs a big hole and sits it there. So all of these plants, from the largest trees on down the ladder to mosses, herbs, vegetables, all of it was accomplished here on day three. Our, our Tuesday. See, this is establishes the seven-day week. Why did the nations all sign off on a seven-day week, not an eight-day or some other deal? It all goes back to this. <clears throat> now, we, we left in our study on this page here. This, this, this will get people laughing at you if you were to tell them this, if you believed it. Do you know what the Bible teaches? Can you read it? The Bible teaches that we got the plant kingdom before we got the sun, the moon, and the stars. We got them on what we call our Wednesday. Right in the middle of the week, we get sun, moon, and stars. And the important thing to note there is that, as in we had in our point, these luminaries, lights, if you will. Now, we don't need that light that we got for day one and carried over to this point for, uh, for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We now get a full-blown sun, a full-blown moon, and all the stars. He brings them into existence. 
God alone can create and bring into existence that which does not exist, or he wouldn't be God. Okay, it's a miracle, but it is a supernatural action. The, 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 the luminaries were placed inside the firmament. Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, restated in verse 15. And the big point, again, to belabor the point, but I want you to understand it. As a believer in Jesus Christ, your Bible, my Bible, teaches that we got vegetation all over the earth before we got sun, moon, and stars. This is as simple as it can be. Anybody could read. You may not appreciate all the details until you have someone explain it to you, but the Bible teaches this. And this is the reason why some people have rejected the plan of salvation and the Bible completely is because they, they, they don't understand that things didn't come about as we are taught in our popular science classes in school and elsewhere and shoved at us all over the all the nature programs, on and on and on and on and on and on. What took God six days, they've, they, they have a timeline that is just mind, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. You have a choice. You either believe the Bible or you believe fake modern science. Fake. It's a lie. More on that. So we get the plant kingdom before we get the luminaries. Third day, plant kingdom. Fourth day, lights in the expanse of heaven. We need to name them and separate them out. And uh, these lights are for a purpose. Separate the basic, separate day from night. What do we have at night? Atmospheric conditions permitting, but they're still there. Atmospheric conditions permitting. We have the light of the moon and we have the light of the stars. And by the way, they can be very bright in certain conditions where you're not competing with ground lights. Like up in the mountains, it's quite spectacular. And when there's a full moon, that thing is bright. More on that. Two great lights, light one, the sun, the lesser light that governs the night, the moon. We, will, we see in here that the moon has its, is it, has its the, the real moon has its own light source, her light. She's referred to in the feminine analogy, her light. She isn't reflecting the light of the, of the sun like we're taught in science classes. She's got her own light. So they have this thing completely turned on its head before the modern world. The truth's gonna win out. If Genesis 1 is, if Genesis 1 is true, then this whole other system is a part of the devil's world trying to hide God and make the Bible look stupid. We'll see who's stupid in the end when all this is brought out and made clear. Anyway, and it also it throws in here, uh, to me it always struck me as kind of an afterthought, he made the stars also. And they are completely different in their makeup than what they're told in the, in the books. <clears throat> now, you can go out and buy you a book with big pictures of these things, that's just artist drawings. These aren't actual pictures. They don't have actual pictures of a round ball earth. If, if it was true, they should be able to and have it and have it and get, get their equipment out there far enough to watch it spin. They could have it as a, 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 a screensaver on your computer. No. You say, well, what are all these pictures? Computer-generated images. That's what they are. They're not actual pictures. 
People have shown that NASA keeps putting out pictures of the Earth and it's different, it's different, it's different, and all the rest of it. It's fake. With a computer or with the imagination of an artist, got these nice coffee table books that shows the different planets and all this business. The, the person that looks at this thinks, well, this is what it really looks like. Not realizing that this is artistry of an artist. It's not the actual picture. Like you would take a photograph of whatever out there. It's a picture. <clears throat> All right, so these were placed in the expanse to give light on the earth, govern the day, govern the night. God saw that it was good. Day four. All right, point seven, features of the earth looking at different scriptures. What do they say our earth is doing right now? What do they say? They say it's spinning. Somebody said when we were kids, we were told it was spinning. We'd go outside and jump up and think that the earth would go under us. <laughs> well, it didn't. They came right back down the same spot. So are they going sideways and up at the same time? No. It would be a complete catastrophe if we were on a spinning ball. A total, well, we couldn't even survive. We can be here to talk about it. So the earth the Bible presents is stationary. It's not moving. Indeed, the earth is firmly established. It cannot be moved. What? I read things all the time. They say the earth is wobbly, spinning at 1,040 at the equator. I had this in school when I was in high school. And it's running around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. I read that somewhere. Well, there's your three sixes. Uh, is that coincidental? I don't know. These tricksters. It has a dome over it, 0.5 above. It has foundations. You never refer to the foundations of a ball. You have a basketball, it does not have foundations. It has curvature everywhere. It has no flat surfaces on it. None. It has foundations. You establish the earth on its foundations so that it can, there's your another verse, will not be moved forever and ever. Other verses cited, which cannot be measured. Furthermore, well, they tell me what the measurement of our earth is, but it's all made up. Thus says the Lord, if the heavens above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out below, then I will cast off all the offspring of Israel for all they've done. Micah 6 2. It has pillars. Balls don't have pillars. Globes. For Samuel 2 8, he raised the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the of the earth. He, he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make to, to make sit, make them, excuse me, sit with nobles and inherit a, a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world on them. The earth is suspended. It is suspended. I'm holding this up, but if I could hold it in one place, it's be, it would be suspended, just sitting there. Under normal conditions, it would fall, but it is held up by the power of God 24-7 all the time. It doesn't move. It sits right underneath the third heaven like a footstool sits right underneath a chair. Of course, you can move a footstool, but the earth cannot be moved. It has pillars. There are pictures and diagrams of, of this uh, online to illustrate it. For all the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he set the world on them. Job 9, 6, who shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. Psalm 75, 3, the earth and all who dwell in it will melt. It is I who have set, firmly set its pillars. 
It is suspended on nothing, just beneath the throne room of heaven. Job 26, 7. He stretches out the earth, excuse me, he stretches out the north over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. Yeah, its surface is circular and flat with an inscribed ice wall called Antarctica. Clouds are a hiding place for him, so he cannot see. He walks on the vault of the heaven. Vault, different word. He has inscribed a circle on the face of the waters at the boundary of light and darkness. Proverbs 8, 27. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep. That is not the equator. There is no inscription at the equator. There is a, there is a midpoint between the no, what we call the north and all the way down. There is a midpoint, yes. But it isn't in, there's no inscription. This keeps the water in place so it doesn't go off the earth. <clears throat> that what people used to make fun of that. Oh, all the water just run off. You had a ship, you just go right over the edge. Problem is, there's a wall to keep it there. So all the ice wasn't wiped out. He who sits above the circle of the earth and all its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent, dome to dwell in. All right? G. The earth is never described as a spinning ball in the Bible and traveling and moving in space. In fact, the only mention of a ball in scripture, again, like a baseball, a basketball, is found in Isaiah 22, 18. It has nothing to do with the earth. And I will row you tightly like a ball, D-U-R. The earth has four corners, Isaiah 11:12. And I will gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. That is not just poetic language. And we have the four directions and all the rest of it. The four corners of the earth. Imagine a table that's square. And in the middle of it, this coffee table, is a glass insert. That's the best I can do right now. Might be able to do better later. And I saw the four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the winds of the earth. This is in the book of Revelation, in the tribulation, when there's a lull in the action. 28, and will come out to deceive the nations, Satan, which are in the four corners of the earth. Spheres do not have corners, foundations, and pillars, Gog and Magog. Revelation 20, verse 9 indicates that the earth is flat. This is the Gog and Magog attack. Now, I think that they, as a result of the second advent, that the Lord's gonna change dramatically, I know he is, the topography of the earth as we know it. To what degree and extent, I still have to think about this. But all the mountains are going down. That means every island is gonna be no longer in existence because islands are simply the tops of mountains that go deep down into the sea. So we may go back to a completely different configuration. Remember that when the people come out of the trib, uh, they'll be judged and so many people will be eliminated and it, it's all start over. Let's start the nations up again. The different races, the different people will go out and pioneer a new civilization. And so at the end of that civilization, thousand years later, 10 centuries, what we have, indi this indicates this, Revela Revelation 29, indicates that the earth is flat. And they came up on the broad plain, Platos, we have plateau of the earth. The term Platos is used in connection with the flat linear dimensions of the New Jerusalem in Revelation 21, 6. Can you imagine putting the New Jerusalem on a ball, on curvature? You re it's ridiculous. Man does not know its dimensions. Have you understood the, bre the, the breadth of the earth? Tell me, Job, if you know. Jeremiah 31, 37, thus says the Lord. I gave that one already, gave it again. If the heavens can be me measured and the foundations of the earth searched out below, 
then I will cast off all the spring of it, all the offspring of Israel for all they've done. In summation, the earth is flat. Guess what terms we use? We use sea level. Level. This is level. It isn't built in a curve. It's level. If you had a ball, you can't say anything on that ball is level. How, no matter how small or how big that ball is. A ball, supposedly, as big as the earth, there's no place level. See level. Because you're constantly moving on a curve. That's not where we live. We live on a flat earth with hills and mountains and valleys and, and that sort of thing. But overall, it's flat. And we measure all elevation. How high is, name a mountain. How high is that mountain? The height of the mountain is based on sea level, a constant. We, we do not live on a ball with water in curvature. It's ridiculous. Why didn't I ever think of that? Never mind. It is so stupid. It just goes to show what the devil can sell people on. We, may, we, we can laugh at the ancients for all the stuff they, they believed, followed. And it all goes back to the same thing. Why can't they figure this out if it's so easy? It's because they do not want God in their thinking and they do not want to face the Bible. I've seen it all my life. They don't want to face the Bible. Okay, run down that path. See what it gets you. <clears throat> the earth is flat, stationary, circular, over which is the sun, moon, and stars, along with foundations and pillars, hanging in space just beneath a water reservoir, waters above, and over it all is God's throne room, the real estate of the third heaven, which is no doubt quite large. Uh, I put in there, go online and see pictures of clouds behind the sun. Somebody didn't make those up. In fact, I had someone walk the park up here and said I was looking up and that's just exactly what I saw. People say, well, you're, you're, you just fooled yourself. No, the sun and the moon are not that far away. Not any 93 million miles for the sun and 240,000 plus for the moon. They've had to change this figure through the years when they first came up with this stupid model. But anyway, So modern science tells us the exact opposite. The sun is stationary and the earth is moving. That doesn't support anything that I have seen. So that brings us to point eight. The sun is in constant motion over the earth. Can you read plain English? Ecclesiastes 1, four through seven, makes it abundantly clear that just as water and rivers return to their place, so the sun returns to its place on its circuit over the earth. I'm reading from this passage. Okay, we're talking about movement. Now there's different types of movement. A generation goes and a generation comes. That's a motion, a process, one following the other. But the earth remains forever also the sun rises and the sun sets. Now everybody will tell you that's figurative language. It's just the earth spinning and it looks like it's setting and rising. No, it rises and it's set from the viewpoint of a person on the ground. And hastening to its place, it rises again. Hastening to its place, it rises again. This further emphasizes that it's on a circuit set up by God. Uh, blowing towards the south, then turning towards the north, the wind continues swirling around. And on its circular courses, the wind returns. All the rivers flow to the sea. 
yet the sea is not full. To the place where the rivers flow, there they flow again. That's explained by evaporation. In part, at least. Also, Psalm 19.6. Its rising is from one end of the heavens, and its circuit. A circuit. If you know what the word circuit is, look it up. Well, there's electrical circuits. There's uh, where people where people go on a circuit. And back in our history, uh, people, uh, the Pony Express, that each of these riders had a circuit, had certain stops he made. And he came back to the same spot and then took off with his delivery. Circuit riders. Not circus, circuit. It means a predetermined path. And it's circuit to the other end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. Now one that, this is where I got cornered. I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm not criticizing anybody. But I had to face the music. Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still. This is the famous long day of Joshua. You can read it, you can read it in that chapter, in 10. The Jews were fighting an enemy. They, they, they were winning the day, but they needed more day, light, or ideally, so that the enemy could not regroup and they'd have to fight him again and lose more people and all the rest of it. So it's the long day of Joshua. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, so he had witnesses, O sun, stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still. That's a, that's a miracle. God stopped it. And the moon stopped, that's a miracle, until the nation avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher, a Jewish writing? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. That's the long day of Joshua. I bet everybody on earth was wondering, what the is going on? Is it the end of the world? What, what's just happening? So that sun moving around up there is set on a circuit and God, God controls its movement. <clears throat> I think uh, in the tribulation, the day is going to be shortened. Not dramatically. And that would be the result of speeding it up a tad, if I'm right. Because the Bible tells us how many days are in the, in the trib. Seven years, 360 day day. We got 365 and a quarter. So, I, so he's always free to make any kind of modifications he wants to in this thing. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped until that occurred. So, okay, I'm moving on. This type of miracle, and it's more complicated in this instance, occurred in the day of Hezekiah but with this twist. The sun stopped and went backward. On Ahaz's sundial, 10 degrees. If you go online, you can see ancient sundials. Okay? They kept time with them, like we do with a watch or something. They had sundials. It's all kinds of them. You can even buy one today and put, in your, put out there and watch it. A sundial. And there's some very interesting ones that I saw online. <clears throat> so you could tell basically what time of day it was based on the shadow thrown on the sundial if it was placed right and all the other factors are involved. You can read, you can read all that in 2 Kings 20, 1 through 11. Now that one, that one, I asked someone about that. They said, I don't have a clue what that is. But they were basing this on <clears throat> what has taught us <clears throat> about the sun, moon, and the rest of it. So I don't even know what the hell that is. 
That's because you got everything backwards. So uh, the life of Hezekiah is interesting. He's one of the kings that turned out okay. He had his problems, serious ones as, as a matter of fact, and recovered spiritually. But uh, in verses one, uh, it, it tells you here in Isaiah chapter, excuse me, 20, got the wrong deal here. Uh, he asked that this happen and it happened. And uh, speaking to his court prophet Isaiah, what will be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day? Isaiah said, verse nine, this shall be the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 steps or back 10 steps? So Hezekiah answered, it is easy for the shadow to decline 10 steps, but no, let the shadow go turn back 10 steps. It would be like you're in the middle of the day and it goes back to the early morning or something like that. Isaiah the prophet cried to the Lord. He brought the shadow on the stairway back 10 steps by which it had gone down on the stairway. See, that's translated stairway. It's not a stairway. I even saw an article on it online. It's, the sun, it's a sundial. All right. Uh, so then if you had an earth like we have, it would have to stop spinning and then spin backwards and then start spinning counterclockwise. It's stupid, beyond stupid. All right, we'll pick up here next time. The moon is a light unto itself. Genesis 1.16. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity. May God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in Christ's name. Amen.